This week, I'm going to make a luxury sweet cream ice cream base, turn that into a black forest ice cream that is just going to be amazing. And I'm going to show you how to balance that recipe on that scoopulator ice cream calculator that I showed you last week. Loads of people wanted to have another video on that ice cream calculator scoopulator. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. I went through a lot of different iterations of Black Forest ice cream and I've focused down onto a super easy but very luxurious sweet cream ice cream base. We're going to do a finely chopped chocolate add-in, very much like haagen Belgian chocolate. And then we're going to do a cherry swirl using canned cherries. So, got my homemade Starbucks. Let's dig in to the calculator. Here we go, we're on Scoopulator. This is the opening website, very much like you saw last time. We're gonna dig straight in with a standard ice cream base, general ice cream target profile. We're not gonna use any of the other ones. Now I'm gonna aim towards 14 to 15% fat here, and I'm gonna reduce the sugar by using allulose. So first, let's add our cream. This is Obviously, there's lots of different variations. If you're in the US, use heavy cream. If you're in the UK, go all the way down the bottom and you will see double cream, the two different variations. Actually, it's, there's like a dozen different variations of double cream, but 1548, perfect. Whipping cream, this is my whipping cream, like I said, 33% fat. If yours is different and it's not on the list, just add it, it's really easy. Next, we're gonna add the milk and this is whole milk that I'm adding here. But you can see there's a long, long list. Choose the one that you want to use, you. So there we go, 3.2% fat, 3.25%, but it, it's, you know, close enough. Um, sugar. Now, if you just start typing sugar, you'd see loads of different variations, but you actually just want to choose the type of sugar that you want. Here, granulated sugar. Now, if I were to go granulated sugar, we can add dextrose and the likes as well. But I, I kind of want this to be maybe a lighter sugar ice cream. So I'm gonna use allulose. This recipe, I'm gonna add a little bit of glucose and that's gonna change the texture slightly. Glucose, corn syrup, all corn syrup is glucose, excluding high fructose corn syrup. That's a different thing altogether. Let's add some numbers in and get started. 500 grams of our cream and our milk, 150 grams of allulose, 15 grams of glucose syrup, and then we're gonna add a stabilizer in here because the solids are gonna be a bit low because we're using allulose. So our relative sweetness, that's kind of, that's deceiving slightly by, because we're using allulose, but our solids, as we can see, are 36.7, 36% uh, fat are really a little bit low, but our milk solids non-fat needs to be high. So here we go, we've got our fat percentage pretty much where I wanna be. This is the top end of where I wanna be, 15% fat. Sweet cream needs to be luxurious, so we need it to be high fat with good texture and balance. The solids are a little bit low. I like my solids to be at 40%. That, that is pretty much where I try and get all my solids recipes, all my ice cream recipes, solids content to be, around 40%. It's a really, really good base point. But obviously because we're using allulose, the high effect on freezing point means we can't put as much in. So we, we balance that with a bit of stabilizer. That stabilizer will increase the viscosity of this base. That in turn helps us create a perception of higher solids content. Higher solids content also help that freezing point. So it's quite important. Solids content is quite important in ice cream. The lower your solids content, the higher the ice crystal formation is gonna be. And the larger those ice crystals themselves will grow. So we don't want that. We need to balance this out to make sure that it's kind of, you know, got that luxurious mouthfeel. The relative sweetness, because we're using allulose, I'm not sure this is actually doing a particularly good job, but allulose is 70% as sweet as normal table sugar, so sucrose. Um, glucose syrup is not very sweet. It's generally you buy something around 40 DE, in a store, which is DE means dextro, dextrose equivalent, um, but it's it's not particularly sweet. So it doesn't increase the sweetness that much, but actually we don't want a particularly sweet ice cream here. We're gonna add chocolate into it, which will carry a sweetness level depending on what chocolate we use. And we're gonna add in that cherry swirl too. That's gonna be nice and sweet to cut through this ice cream. So we've got a less sweet ice cream with sweeter add-ins. Don't go too crazy with the with the high sugar ice cream if you're adding 
high sugar add-ins. So as you can see, we, we're playing with the, with the amounts until we kind of get to where we want to be. Now we can look at our evaporation settings. Now, I'm not sure this bit, it, this bit is maybe a little bit misleading. So specify evaporation, we're gonna cook this off. It says here cooking to, eight, cooking to 85C will lose four to 5% of its weight. Now that is not a particularly accurate statement because if you take your base and you heat it up incredibly fast, then you will lose around 2%. If you leave it up there and you cook it out completely, then you can lose up to 10% of weight. So this is a generalized statement. I take that with a pinch of salt. Here we go, we got our scoopability right down in the middle, which is where I like my scoopability to be. For minus 14 Celsius is a really good serving point for ice cream. You can, you can take it out of the freezer, scoop it straight away. Again, we've got our curve here, but you can kind of ignore that if you just go for your serving temperature of about minus 14. Minus 13, minus 14, that's a really nice serving temperature. So here's our nutritional value, again, we're, we're pretty much done. I can show you this multiple times in every video. So we can save this recipe if you want to. I mean, it's basically just sweet cream. So let's type that in. And it needs a description. Well, it doesn't need a description. It's an optional description. So let's put in, it's ice cream in it. There we go. That is what we're gonna call this ice cream. We're gonna save that. And let's copy our amounts here. There we go on our ingredient side. On the left, we can literally just drag over, copy. So again, it's a really easy way to create a balanced kind of recipe. The solids are quite low or low for me. I like my solids to be, like I said, 40%, but we're using allulose. So allulose has a much higher effect on a freezing point. So we have to use less. That is where a lot of solids come from in our recipes, sugar. Um, the, the use of a stabilizer to counter that is really quite important to create a luxury ice cream. So we're going all, through all the effort of creating a super nice sweet cream recipe, but it's low in solids. So we need to boost those solids back up by imitating that with the stabilizer and then cooking it slightly to reduce the water content, which will naturally increase our solids. You could omit the stabilizer and cook it down more cook it down five, six, seven percent, you will naturally increase the percentage of solids based on your recipe because you're evaporating water, which is an empty ingredient. So that's another way to, to do that. It's, there are other ways, there are other things in this calculator such as adding ingredients. If you want me to show you how to add ingredients in there, let me know in the comments and I'll do it in another video in a few weeks. Um, but for now, let's just drink the coffee and make our ice cream. Right, we've got all our ingredients, super simple recipe. Like I said, this is the allulose I'm using this time. Stock levels seem to fluctuate in the US, so I just get what's the cheapest. This is powdered rather than granulated. Doesn't make any difference. So let's get everything in. Let's start with our milk, and that's 634 grams. Into that goes 634 grams of our cream, 33% whipping cream. Into that, we're gonna have 25 grams of glucose syrup or straight corn syrup. Again, I, I keep having to say this, this is not high fructose corn syrup. Don't overcomplicate it, 25 grams. 70 grams of skim milk powder. And now we're gonna do our allulose. We're gonna do that separately because we're using a stabilizer, okay? 135 grams of our powdered allulose. And into that allulose, we're gonna put 1.9 grams of our stabilizer. It really does make a difference in recipes that are lower in solids than you'd like. That increased viscosity really does help create a, a more balanced mouthfeel. Our sugar can go into our ice cream base, stir this together, and let's get this on heat. We're gonna heat this up to 85C, 185F, and that's because we've got that stabilizer in it. If you don't use your stabilizer, the result won't be as good, but it will still be delicious because it's high fat, 15% just shy, and then we'll come back. There we go, 85C. Doesn't take long, you know, depending how fast you heat it up, five or 10 minutes, something like that. So we're gonna let this cool down in the refrigerator, we're gonna age this overnight, and that just allows the milk flavors to build within that base. And it also allows the stabilizer to itself distribute in amongst the base properly. So in that goes, let's talk about our cherry swirl. For the cherry syrup, there are a few ways to do this. You can buy it, you can use a coffee syrup, and I've done that before, uh, Amarina cherry syrup, that's delicious. 
Um, but today we're going to use a can of Bing cherries in syrup. This is a 400 milliliter can and importantly it has 42 grams of sugar per 167 milliliters. That tells us what we need to do to this. So let's open this can. We're going to pour the whole thing into a pan. Now we're going to put this on a gentle heat, get it up to 85, 90 centigrade and leave it there for about five or 10 minutes. And we're going to reduce the weight by about 30 to 40%. We've got a reduction of about 30% of the water content in our cherries. We're going to leave this here now to cool down for about half an hour because we're going to blend them in a blender. You can use a stick blender or a food processor or anything. So if you've got one of those, get it ready and then we're going to carry on. Let's pour them into here. So with those cherries in there, we've got our corn syrup or glucose and normal sugar. Let's blend these up nice and smooth. You could absolutely strain this, but I want this a pretty natural kind of cherry swirl. I want it a natural cherry color and everything. So with that in there, we can now add in 25 grams of glucose or corn syrup and 10 grams of normal sugar. The normal sugar is there to adjust the sweetness level and obviously the freezing point depression and the glucose syrup is there to change the texture and to affect the way the ice crystals form in this so that we don't get a super icy kind of cherry swirl. So with that in mind, let's get a little spatula, like a spatularette and stir that together and it's going to go back on heat again. We're going to heat this up to 85 C and keep it there for two minutes. So let's do that. And that is now also going to go in the fridge overnight to let that flavor develop and for it to thicken up. This is a natural cherry swirl. So I actually quite like the unnatural cherry swirl. So before we pre chill our machine, just going to explain what's going to happen. Going to get the ice cream base in there, going to take it out of the fridge, stir it up and then get it in here cooling down. Whilst that's happening, we're going to take our chocolate out of the freezer because I wanted to keep that in the freezer. Stops a lot of the static making your chocolate fly everywhere. Chop that up before we put it in and then we'll get our cherry swirl out as well. So let's get all of that going. Black Forest ice cream with sweet cream base, chocolate add-ins, not a stretch teller because we're not adding it in while it's freezing. So it's basically just chopped chocolate. And then that more natural cherry swirl. Let's try some, see how this turned out. I don't normally make sweet cream bases and I definitely don't make fuel latte gelato um, because I like my ice cream to taste of something. But occasionally there's a situation where you want the add-ins to kind of shine forward. And that's what we got here. We got uh, a basic, an unflavored, milk flavored, if you will, ice cream base. Really nice mouthfeel, higher fat, 15%, or was it 14%? I forget. Higher fat levels. You can taste that chocolate. You can taste that cherry without the cherry going artificial. I like using this as a cherry swirl. You can thicken it up with a little bit of goar or xanthan or whatever. Um, but this is a super, super nice, much stronger flavor than this cherry swirl. This being natural, this has been concentrated and has additional flavor boosters into it, but I love this stuff. So there we go. Uh, using an ice cream calculator or using scupulator specifically, to do this one. There's a lot more that you can do on these ice cream calculators. I'm just, on these videos, I just kind of touch in how to add the ingredients and look at how to balance the recipe. But it, a full instructional video 
on how to use an ice cream calculator, whether that be Scoopulator or the super complex ones like Patrick's ice cream calculator, then those kind of videos are gonna be, you know, half an hour long plus. So if you do want a video like that, and I know a lot of you won't, but let me know in the comments if you want me to do a, an elongated video on the intricacies, adding recipes, adding ingredients, where you should be concentrating your percentages on, balancing gelatos and ice creams and sorbets, etc. It's, it's a super complex video, so it would take a long time to film. So I'm only gonna do it if there's enough demand for it. So do let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next week when I make something. I haven't figured that out yet, so bye.